One build brings the orb generation and unlimited supers to new heights with 464 orbs created for the entire fire team, while another build brings new meaning to the phrase get in my backpack while I slay everything in sight and crowd control entire waves of enemies. Oh, and yes, I am super excited for Final Shape and the Prismatic subclass. I already have my spreadsheet going with new builds for you guys, and I can't wait to explore and make them for you. So I have now probably played the new Onslaught Horde mode for close to 20 hours since the update, and all of that is in the Legend difficulty. And let me tell you, those waves of enemies are no joke the higher you go. I have asked a lot of people on where their teams are struggling, and where they fail the most, and the majority is during the waves between 30 and 50 on both difficulties. The boss rooms aren't that difficult for most people, since you can take your time in them, and you get that rally flag before entering. So if you slow it down on the boss rooms and need to take a little longer on damage, that's perfectly fine. Now the reason I bring these things up first is because certain builds will work better in horde mode and we need to focus on a few points. Any crowd control builds that lock down waves, any super builds that allow you to generate orbs of power for your fire team and loop supers for the whole team over and over, and then any add clear builds that just slay out like you saw of my screenshot at the beginning, and then if these builds can provide some sort of survivability for yourself and maybe even your team, those are the builds we want. Then if you can combine two or three of those things that I just mentioned, that's when you get builds that give you results like I showed you, with orbs generated or killed, depending on what you're running. These are the types of builds you should be running if you're looking to complete Onslaught with random LFG groups, because you're going to need to do a lot of the heavy lifting for them, but that's okay, right? As long as you get a build set up properly, and that's what I'm here for. These are the types of builds I will be focusing on over the next few weeks that will excel in the Onslaught mode and help you guys out. Now I don't think there is a better build to start with than the Void Hunter that provides infinite supers. We're talking two or three supers on a single boss or a single wave of enemies, insane orb of power generation that allows your fire team to chain supers over and over, amazing crowd control with those supers, and your super even suppresses everything, which can stun overload champions as well, and to top it off some of the best survivability in the game with devour and invisibility on demand, which we can use to get a revive whenever it's needed. I'm also going to give you some options as well just in case you don't have a few of the items that I go over. There are six main things that just feed us super energy and allow for infinite supers. Two of which are fragments, two are also from mods, and then two from our loadout. But before we jump into that, we have a quick sponsor today. If you love comprehensive vehicle combat, then War Thunder is the game for you and it is available for free on PC and consoles. The thing I like the most is that War Thunder offers a game mode for every type of player there is. For me, that is the fast-paced matches of arcade mode because it has enhanced vehicle performance that I really enjoy. You can take command of over 2,500 vehicles, which includes tanks, planes, and helicopters. We also have ships from 10 major nations, and this is ranging from biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. That's just a huge array of vehicles and it's amazing. With the incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects, War Thunder uses these to immerse yourself into the game and place you right at the helm of these powerful war machines. And then War Thunder also boasts an impressive community, with over 70 million players, and I think you guys should be a part of that. You can play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and make sure you guys click my link down below in the description or in the pinned comment, because new and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack. This includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and 7 days of premium account. And this is all available for a limited time so make sure to be quick and click those links down below. And thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go over the 6 different ways to get your super back instantly and just print orbs of power for your entire fire team. First we have 2 fragments. We have Echo of Reprisal. Final blows when surrounded by combatants grant super energy. This only has a 1 second cooldown between activations, and that's why you see me jump into the middle of all these tethered enemies, because it's just bonus super energy coming back to you as long as you have 3 enemies near you, which in the horde mode that's pretty easy. And then the other fragment is Echo of Harvest. Defeating weakened targets creates an orb of power and avoid breach. This is just another way to spawn an orb of power. Now on top of those 2 fragments, we have 2 mods. The first one is Harmonic Siphon. This just means when we get a double kill with a void weapon, we spawn an orb of power. We're actually going to double stack this twice on our helmet. And then the second mod, which is going to be on your helmet as well, is Dynamo. Reduce super cooldown when using your class ability near targets. This is just another 2-3% super energy on every dodge you do. And again, all these different ways are just adding to that super bar. The fifth thing that adds super energy is going to be your weapon choice. We need a strong weapon to pair with this. 
The reason for that is dealing damage generates super energy, and the more outgoing damage you're dealing will give more super energy in return. Exotic weapons give even more. So in the video, I'm using Buried Bloodline. I've talked about this sidearm multiple times from the new dungeon. And if you guys do not have this, another great alternative is Graviton Lance in this slot. And Graviton Lance is also Overload Champion, so that helps too. And then last but not least is our sixth way, and that is Orpheus Rig Exotic Armor Piece. We can get up to 50% of our super back pretty much instantly when we tether a group of enemies in this onslaught mode. And then for all those tethered enemies, you also get 10% grenade, melee, and class ability energy back per tethered enemy. That's how you can throw a grenade, tether, and throw another grenade right away. So Orpheus Riggs gives you that first 50% of your super back pretty much instantly. And then we combine those two fragments, those two mods on your helmet, and your weapon of choice that deals great outgoing damage. And that makes up the last 50% of your super. And then since you are creating so many orbs of power, your teammates should be picking those up and using their supers throughout the waves. So once you get that first 50% of your super back from Orpheus Rig, go grab the extra orbs of power you see on the ground from your teammates, and that will feed your super as well. Now for your two aspects on the build, we are gonna take Vanishing Step, so you can just dodge and go invisible, and Stylus Executioner. So every time you defeat one of those tethered enemies, you'll go invisible, because you defeated a weakened or suppressed target. So that's two ways we can go invisible. For your grenade, you can take Vortex Grenade or Suppression Grenade, if you need help with Overload Champions, or just wanna take a major you're out of the fight for 10 seconds you can just suppress them which is great and then our last two fragments are going to be echo of starvation picking up a void breach or an orb of power grants devour we're creating so many orbs ourselves that we're going to have devour up all the time this just gives us 70 hp on anything that we defeat and we get a nice chunk of our grenade back and then we're also going to take echo of instability defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds to your void weapons so then we get Volatile Rounds to our Buried Bloodline or Graviton Lance. For your stats on the build, aim for 100 Resilience. That is your 30% damage reduction when you hit 100 Resilience, so you definitely want that, especially in difficult content. On the boots, you have two options either Void Surge mods to increase your overall damage, but I really didn't need extra damage. I needed abilities to handle waves of enemies, so I like to take Innervation, Orbs of Restoration, and Absolution. This just means every time I pick up an Orb of Power, you're getting a lot of ability energy back, and since we're creating so many Orbs of Power, it just feeds the overall gameplay loop very well. And then instead of spending my armor charges on Surge mods, I spend it on special finisher, which allows me to finish oh, an enemy over. and grant special Let's ammo to myself there. and my fire team. Again, thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to play it for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. And make sure to use my link down below in the pinned comment or the video description. All of you new and returning players that haven't played in six months will receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including the multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. This is only available for a limited time, so make sure not to miss out.